Hi again, this is Al K0CN, and in this video we'll take a look at contesting, specifically the CQ Worldwide RTTY contest, and we'll look at it through the eyes of a flex radio operator using N1MM Plus logger software. I'll be using the Flex 6700, however any of the signature series radios would behave the same and I'll be using it with Smart SDR version 1.8.4 and N1MM Plus version 1.0.5931. Now I'll be using two monitors for this contest and let me say that there is nothing special about the way I have the windows arranged on these monitors. This is an arrangement that works for me and you may want to use something totally different. The primary monitor is the one we're looking at now and you'll see it's quite busy. A lot of things are going on all at once. You'll note on the right hand side is the user interface for the Flex Radio. As part of that interface we have the pan adapter on the top, we have the waterfall, and then on the right hand side we have the controls for the radio. Next to that we have the digital interface and I'm set up using MMTTY. The top portion of the digital interface is the window that shows the text that's decoded by the software and the bottom part contains some controls and a tuning guide to help you tune in the RTTY signals. Next we have the entry window where the call signs and the QSO exchange information is entered. Below that are a series of buttons which contain programmed messages which we'll be using to exchange information in the contest. On the far left we have the band map. It shows the operating frequency of the receiver, the slice receiver, and also the possible calls that might be active on those frequencies. These call signs are spots which are placed there through the Telnet system that we'll look at in a moment. The window on the bottom is the check log and each time we enter a call sign into the entry window it will offer us a check of the call sign as to whether it's good or not and offers some alternatives in the event that the decoder copied the call sign in error. On the second monitor at the top center is the logbook. The call signs and the data that are copied and entered into the entry window then are recorded here in the logbook as we proceed. To the left we have the available multiplier box or window and this gives us a listing of call signs that are spots and it tells us whether they are multipliers or not and other information as to their locations, their signal strength, when they were recorded and so on. On the bottom right we have a multiplier list which is a summary of all the call signs that are available and by color code giving us a status as to whether it's a multiplier or whether it's a country that's already been worked. On the bottom left we have the Telnet window and this is a spotting network that you can receive over the internet which provides frequent updates to the band map to the available multipliers list. In the center is the info window and it gives us information about the rate at which we're working stations, our goals, and the time since the last contact. And next to that on the right is a contest summary. Some people like to see how they're doing throughout the contest, how many contacts per band, how many points, and so on. Now let's go back and take a look at the user interface and see how we go about making contacts using Smart STR and how that interacts with N1MM Plus Logger. Now I'll go back to monitor number one and let's take a closer look at the user interface. And I'll zoom in on the pan adapter and waterfall. I have the bandwidth represented here of 80 or 90 kilohertz, but look at how many signals are packed into that space. This is very common in a contest. What the waterfall and the pan adapter do is give you a sense of how crowded it is, what sort of signals are present that I might be able to work, 
It will show me if there's interference in the neighborhood, where it's coming from, if there are several stations on the same frequency, which may reduce my ability to copy if I, if I try to work that station. A number of bits of information become immediately apparent just by looking at the picture. I'll be using the pan adapter on top as a fine tuning aid when I finally decide to zoom in on or select a specific station. The waterfall below I use as a tuning guide and I'll select from those traces stations that I'll want to work. So in the waterfall each of these traces represents a different signal. And above it on the pan adapter you can see a peak and each peak has two points representing the mark and the space for the RTTY signal. So to tune a station in I put the pointer of my mouse on the mark side of the signal, which in this case is the right side. I double click the mouse and immediately the slice receiver jumps to that frequency. I then look up on the pan adapter and I use my mouse wheel to fine tune my receiver so that the yellow vertical lines line up with the peaks of the signal in the pan adapter. Now that I have the station tuned in, I should start receiving text in the MMTTY text window. Then I simply click once on the call sign of the station I'm receiving and that will automatically enter the call sign into the entry window of N1MM+. Then when it's my turn to transmit, I'll press the exchange text button, which on my setup will be function key number two, and I'll transmit my report to the station. Let's make another contact click on the next signal trace and I should start receiving text in the text box. I click on the call sign and see that it's now in the entry window. I'll now send out my call. Once I receive my information I enter it into the logbook by pressing the enter key and I'll transmit my information. Well, that's about it. That's the process for making a contact using Smart SDR on my Flex 6700. I personally find that Smart SDR makes the tuning process for RTTY signals quite easy, and I personally prefer it to using a dial VFO. Also, another advantage using the waterfall, it's easier to find a space on the band to insert your signal and make a run. Well, at the end of this contest, which was a rather laid-back effort on my part. I made over 500 contacts. I thoroughly enjoyed the weekend, and I certainly enjoyed putting this video together, and I hope you find it interesting as well. So with that, I'll bring this video to a close, and wish you all good luck and good DX. 73 from L, K0CN, and thanks for watching.